This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, yes, we will rejoice and be glad in Him and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in Him. Well, this is the day and this is the way that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, yes, we will rejoice and be glad in Him, and be glad in Him. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, so we might as well rejoice and be glad in him oh this is the day and this is his way that the lord has made oh yes he has made another one just for you and me isn't it wonderful he kept us through the night that we might see the light and the dawn of this september 16th he got you up his breath is still in us. Oh, we could make a list, couldn't we, of all of the great, wonderful things the Lord has done. So I welcome you here today for the reading of the Word of God. And listen, we look at the thickness here. We have passed the halfway mark of the year. Look at there, the other side is smaller now. <clears throat> we are coming into the Fall Feast Festival times for our Jewish friends, and we rejoice with them. Oh, to be in Yerushalayim and be there for Rosh Hashanah. Oh, my goodness, that would be just so glorious. So they are celebrating, and we will pray for them that they might have peace to enjoy the festivals of the law of the Lord, the fall festivals. Well, on this September 16th, y'all, we are getting deep into Isaiah, Yeshayahu, Yeshayahu, Isaiah. We are up to chapter 22 today, chapter 22. And we're going to read some more burdens. Oh boy, this is really, if this doesn't raise the hair on your head, <clears throat> you need to awaken your spiritual heart. Okay, let's start and begin with the burden against the valley of vision. The burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now that you have all gone up to the housetops? You who are full of noise, a tumultuous city, a joyous city? Your slain men are not slain with the sword nor dead in battle. All your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. Therefore, I said, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people, for it is a day of trouble and treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen and Kir uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. He removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that it was great. 
and you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Yerushalayim and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool. But you did not look to its maker. You did not look to its maker, nor did you have respect for him who fashioned it long ago. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning. He called for baldness and for girding with sackcloth. But that isn't what they did. But instead, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. <clears throat> That was the attitude of the people. What would be our attitude if we were threatened with extinction? Would we weep? Would we put on our plainest clothes so we're not exalting self? It's a good question. And then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts Surely for this iniquity there will be no atonement for you, even to your death, says the Lord God of hosts. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Go, proceed to this steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, What have you here, and whom have you here, that you have hewn a sepulcher here? as he who hews himself a sepulcher on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O mighty man, and will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country, and there you shall die. And there your glorious chariots shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office and from your position, he will pull you down. And then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robes and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity from the cups, to all the pitchers. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was on it will be cut off. For the Lord has spoken. And how do you feel the people are receiving this word? I think as the Lord had Isaiah in a bubble of protection to deliver the word. We move right along to chapter 23, and we are going to read the burden against Tyre. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, 
no harbor. From the land of Cyprus it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled, and on great waters the grain of Sihor. The harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a marketplace for the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the strength of the sea saying, I do not labor nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish. Whale, you inhabitants of the coastland, is this your joyous city whose antiquity is from ancient days, whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city? whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth. The Lord of hosts has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Overthrow through your land like the river O daughter of Tarshish, there is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, you will rejoice no more. O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon, arise. Cross over to Cyprus, there also you will have no rest. Behold the land of the Chaldeans, this people which was not. Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers, they raised up its places, and brought it to ruin. Well, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength, is laid waste. Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years. Forgotten 70 years. According to the days of one king. At the end of 70 years it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Take a harp and go about the city you forgotten harlot, make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of 70 years that the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord, to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. And we move along to chapter 24 of Yeshayahu, Isaiah. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, and as with the lender, so with the borrower, 
As with the creditor, so with the debtor. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. The new wine fails, the vine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine ceases. The noise of the jubilant ends. The joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city, desolation is left. And the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing, for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, <clears throat> glorify the Lord in the dawning light, the name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. From the ends of the earth, we have heard songs. Glory to the highest. Glory to the highest. Glory to the highest. But I said, I am ruined. Ruined. Woe to me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in a snare. For the windows from on high are opened and the foundations of the earth are shaken. <clears throat> the earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones and on the earth the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners 
are gathered in the pit and will be shut up in the prison. After many days, they will be punished. Then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Sion and in Jerusalem, and before his elders gloriously. So all of that is to pass before the Lord Jesus comes to the Mount Zion and comes to Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously. Wow. I mean, <clears throat> that's a reading today that we just need to know. And we need to have godly fear. We need to look over our lives, don't we? And make sure that we aren't hanging on to some aggravations, to some sins, to some things. Let things that always distressed you before, we must put it to rest. We must repent and come into the protection of the Lord. All right, y'all, after that fearsome reading, we will move right along to the New Testament, to Galatians chapter 2, and we will pick up with verse 17. Galatians chapter 2, 17. Oh, go and see Kathy's graphics. <clears throat> there they are, right there in front of you. All you need to do is touch it. And so Paul continues here, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. And we move along to chapter 3. Of Galatians. Oh foolish Galatians! How about if they said, Oh foolish Americans! Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And I hope that answer is very clear for you, for your life. It is by the hearing of faith that we are saved. And we have to hear it with faith. You know, you can sit on a church pew for years every Sunday and not receive the spirit of the living God. You can just feel a little better and then go home. But we need to hear by faith. And then we can invite him in by faith. And we will have this glorious born again experience. I was 33 years old in the church every year before I found that out. And spiritually, I was awakened. Oh, if you haven't 
experience that, I encourage you today. I encourage you to keep this Bible open and to ask the Lord to come in, that you might be forgiven and born again. That's the way we're going to make it to the end of our lives in these tough days. So let's continue. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, Paul says to these Galatians, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That was all Abraham was need, needed to do, believe. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. And we're seeing that come to pass. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Oh my goodness. I mean, I marvel at how that New Testament fits in with the Old Testament. I mean, everything is connected, isn't it? We move along, y'all, to Psalm 60. This is another miktam of David. And it was for teaching. When he, and it, the whole thing is about when he fought against Mesopotamia and Syria of Zobah. And Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt by the Dead Sea. In its own, I yield to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just said, Father God, I yield to you. <laughs> well, our little interruption was reconnected. Thank you, Jesus. So as I was saying in Psalm 60, all of this that David brought forth was given to the chief musician and it was set to a tune called Lily of the Testimony. Oh God, David says, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. Oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. And we know confusion does not come from the Lord. That's Satan's way of trying to mess everything up. You have given a banner to those who fear you that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. That your beloved may be delivered, save with your right hand. And hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom 
I will cast my shoe. Philistia, shout in triumph because of me. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies, give us help from trouble. And I'm going to say that just, even Cindy is saying the connection has been going in and out. During the entire reading, we come against that in the name of Jesh. Yeshua HaMashiach. And Lord, we ask for clear connection for your word. If there should be connections that are clear on this entire earth, it should be for your word. So Lord, we're asking you to clear it up for us. And so the next line says, give us help from trouble. Hallelujah. For the help of man is useless. Through God, we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Oh, isn't that true? Wonderful Psalm 60, if you needed to hear that again for lack of connections. All right, y'all, we wrap it up with Proverbs 23. Verses 15 and 16. Proverbs 23, 15 and 16. It's right there written out for you very nicely. Thank you, Connie. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice indeed. I myself, yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Oh, isn't that true? When we hear our children speaking right things and wisdom, and maybe we've brought them through some years of troublesome teenagehood, and we think, oh my goodness, are they ever going to really awaken and walk right? And then you hear them. Hey, I've returned. I hope you have. We're going to finish this up, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Before we pray, let me just give you something that I got a kick out of. This was a little article title here on Facebook. It's, it's talking about the jab in the arm. And here's, here's the description. And they've got science. And I put down here on my paper, science with a push. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I was going to read to you, the protected need to be protected from the unprotected by forcing the unprotected to use the protected, to use the protection that didn't protect the protected. <laughs> if you're feeling any confusion about what's going on today? There's, there's the best. That's the best definition I've read yet. Hallelujah to the Lamb. All right, let's hope we can pray. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ for this beautiful day. I'm excited. It is today. I'm finishing my suitcases and we are flying this evening back to Ohio for a visit. And you'll be hearing from me from there. You will not see this kitchen cupboard anymore for a while. It will probably be a relief. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that you are our connection. You are our connection. We can pray and we get reconnected. Boy, that'll preach for those looking for Jesus, won't it? We can be connected by the blood of you, Jesus. You shed your blood and paid the price for our sin. And now we can be reconnected with our Heavenly Father and with you. We can have Holy Ghost to come and live in us and help us. Thank you for that, Lord. We lift up Israel. 
We lift up Yerushalayim, 